It says I'm live. I guess it's true. You can tell me if it's true or not. Welcome. I'm Tim Carter. This is Ask the Builder. And it's March 22nd, 2022. A beautiful, sunny, windy day here in central New Hampshire. Spring is here. I think the ice is going to be out of the lake by um, Friday. Maybe this weekend. But I've been taking photos every morning to kind of show the progression. And it's, 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 the ice is pretty thin. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be pretty early. Typically, the ice goes out of the lake, I don't know, third week of uh, April. So way early. In case you don't know, I, I live in central New Hampshire, and I live on the west shore of Lake Winnesquam. It's the uh, third largest lake in the state of New Hampshire. So big lake but not as big as the big one. <laughs> the big one is Wasaki. That's only over the hill from me. It's only about, as the bird flies, I don't know, maybe I'm five miles from Lake Winnipesaukee. I don't know. 72 square miles. 72 square miles of surface area. <laughs> that's a lot of water. My lake has only got 7.2 square miles, but that's a lot. If you have any questions, put them in the uh, chat. Um, be sure to check in. It's the polite thing to do. Um, no, just like I typed over there, no one likes a lurker. No one. I mean, think about it. If you were, um, if you were out working in your yard and, and there were kind of fences around, you know, there were, you know, you lived in kind of an urban area, but you know, there were little holes in the fences and there were cracks and you're out there working in your yard and you just kind of feel it. You feel you're looking around and you're, you just feel that someone's watching you. <laughs> That's a lurker. All right. So you might be a lurker right now. All right. <laughs> In just a few minutes, I'm going to talk with them about the main topic, uh, turbine vents. Um, I always like to wait till we get just a few more here. So we're going to be talking about turbine vents in just a few minutes. So if you have any questions about turbine vents, some people call them whirly birds. Now's the time to go ahead and type it in. Uh, and, you know, I'll answer your questions as I go. I had to go to town today to uh, shop for materials. That's what I call grocery shopping. When, when I was a builder, I, I used to buy materials to, to build houses with. So when you build a, a meal, you have to have materials. It's that, it's that simple. Some people call them ingredients, but they're actually materials. <laughs> And anyway, it was a great long distance test for my brake repair job on my big Ford F-250 that I did over the weekend. Uh, last week, all of a sudden, my left front brake started to seize up and uh, get really hot. And um, I thought it was the caliper, but I got some advice. And, and you have to understand the, um, the brake lines that go from the master cylinder out to each wheel are metal. But when they get to the wheel, they transition to a rubber hose uh, for all kinds of reasons. And the the one the the one on my left front was original, so it's gosh, 13 years old, 14 years old. And they evidently have a tendency on the inside of the tubing. It's like uh, the tube is made up of two things. Well, the inside can all of a sudden collapse, and what happens is when you put your foot on the brake, you can squirt a little bit of fluid past it to activate the caliper. But the instant you take your foot off the brake, the uh, the tubing collapses and the pressure can't get back. So the caliper thinks that you still have your foot on the brake. So I bought a caliper. I bought the hose, you know, the, 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 the flexible brake line. And I thought, what the heck? I was, I'm going to replace the brake line anyway. Why don't I just replace the brake line and not the caliper and see what happens? I did that. It only took about 40 minutes to do the repair on Sunday. And I took it out for about a four-mile test drive. And I couldn't I couldn't tell any difference in temperature. I, I felt that the repair was, was okay. But this time I went, well, it's about seven miles, eight miles to town and eight miles back. And, and on the way back, I'm going 55 miles per hour on two miles. So that really will heat it up. So when I got home, you know, I put my hand, you know, back 
around, you know, each tire as close as, you know, and, and just kind of touched the, the brake area, not the rotor. And they both seem to be the same temperature. So I think I fixed it, which is very exciting. It was only, only a $50 part, <laughs> only $50 for a stupid hose anyway. So I'll take, I'm going to take the uh, caliper back for credit. Hi, Will. How you doing? Hi, Brett. Uh, did you get, yes. All right. Will's got a question. Got a good question. Brett, I'll be right to you. Um, of course, we're going to talk about the, uh, the it's time to talk about the turbine vents now. Um, yes. So here's what's going to happen. In the newsletter on Sunday, because of what happened yesterday with my daughter, I'm going to just rail on new car dealers. Oh, she, she, she went through the flipping grinder with um, two different Honda dealers out in Long Beach, California. They are such liars. <laughs> I'm going to explain it on the newsletter. So if you, if you don't get my newsletter, you need to be on the newsletter. I'm not going to go through it all here. And I was so proud of my daughter. You have to understand my daughter, my youngest daughter, I love her to death. You know, we all have faults, right? We all have faults. Well, one of her faults is she's a little impatient. And that you, that's like the worst uh, character flaw to have when you're going to buy a new car, especially your first new car. I was terrified she was going to sign one of these deals. And can you believe it? She walked away from both dealerships. Walked away. I mean, she. I'm texting to her in capital letters, get up and walk out the door. <laughs> she did it. Good for her. But she got beat up and bruised, man. Oh, my gosh. Such flipping liars. So what she's going to do now, she's going to do what her brother did. This happened to my son three years ago. Same thing. Same exact thing. I'm going to explain it in the newsletter what happened to him. And um, so he was so upset. What happened is he bought this car, and to make a long story short, Within about three months, he crashed it. It's a, it, he he was on the expressway going to work, and I'm sure this has happened to you, where everything is going fine, and then you decide to change lanes and you go to turn your head, and the instant you turn your head, the person in front of you hits the brakes. So he totaled the car. He didn't get hurt. Nobody got hurt. So he thought, I am never going to a dealer again. And he bought a car through Carvana. And it's been excellent. The experience, he can't say enough about Carvana. All right. So so the bottom line is my youngest daughter is going to buy something from Carvana. All right. Here we go. All right, Don, how you doing? I'm going to get with uh, Brett's question here. So we haven't even talked about turbine vents, but I'll start to talk about it here answering his questions. How many turbine vents, Brett, Brett says, how many turbine vents do you add? Is it based on adequate square feet? Yes. The amount of turbine vents you put up is, is a function of the square foot area of the attic. But understand, you got to be careful. Not all turbine vents are the same size. Some are 8 inch, some are 10, some are 12 in diameter. So you have to factor that in. You have to look at the tables. Does it matter if you have a ridge vent? It doesn't matter. The ridge vents, they don't work, just so you know. Ridge vents don't work. Um, I'm, well, I'll explain in a minute. Is it helpful to also have soft vents? You must have soft vents. You must have soft vents. All right, let's 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 unpack all of this. Um, does it matter if you have a ridge vent? So here's the deal with ridge vents. Back when ridge vents were introduced, and it's like 45 years ago, it's been a long time. You know, they were talking about how, oh, the air just floats out. The hot air just floats out of your attic. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so do you remember anything about your high school physics class? <laughs> Have you ever seen hot air go down? Do you know how a ridge vent works? Where's the flipping whiteboard? Where's the whiteboard? And I was in town today. <laughs> I can just hear you, Will. I can hear it now. I can hear, I actually can hear you laughing all the way from 80 miles away or 70 miles away. 
So here's how arrangement works. All right, just hang with me. I'm trying to uh, get a different colored marker. Oh, how about I use this right here? Instead of using a fine point, and I'll use red because it's hot. All right, ridge vent. So here's your roof. We cut a gap up here. It's about four inches wide. And the ridge vent goes over that so water doesn't get in. But the ridge vent comes down about four or five inches on each side. Maybe about five inches. <laughs> Excuse me, about five inches. So for the hot air to get out, the hot air has got to go up, down, and out. Are you serious? Have you ever seen hot air do that? Stop believing what these people say in, in marketing. Stop it. Stop it right now. Stop believing anything anybody says and apply critical thinking skills and everything you learned in school. All right? Promise me. Stop listening. Stop believing stuff that's in the brochure. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I also, I did a test. I did a test of this. I had ridge vents at my the house I built in uh, Cincinnati. The last house I built for my family. It, it was the hot, it was the hottest day in June. 95 degrees outside. The attic must have been 150 degrees. No wind, just this blazing hot day. I go up there about one in the afternoon. The hottest, I mean, just hot. It's so hot in the attic. The instant I go up there, I start to perspire. It just, it like, it, it like it's raining water down my face. I light a stick of incense. And I've got great soffit ventilation. I light a stick of incense. I have a flashlight with me. I hold the incense up near the ridge vent and not, and it doesn't move. The smoke just kind of billows out. It's not like being sucked up into the ridge vent. Stop believing these people. Now, when do ridge vents work? Whenever there's a wind on the lee side of the roof, it does vacuum some air out. Some. That's where turbine vents come in, okay? I know. I drove I actually did drive right by the store. I drove right by it because I went to the dump. And when you go from the dump to the grocery store, you drive right by it. I promise you I'll get it. All right. Why did why are turbine vents so great? Turbine vents are great because, number one, they don't involve electricity. Number two, when there's the slightest breeze, they start to literally vacuum air out of the attic. And the, the faster they turn, the more air they vacuum out. Um, they are remarkable. This is why, this is why these turbine vents, you have seen, if you, if you look at old, Older, large factories, I mean, they have giant ones on factories. They have ones that are two, three, four feet in diameter, huge, huge turbine vents. They work. They work so, they move so much air, you can't believe it. So, you, and you want to get the best ones. The best ones are made here in America. Uh, they're made down south, I think, in Arkansas. I think that's, I don't know, Arkansas, Mississippi, one, one of those states down there. Um, and it's Lamanco, L-O-M-A-N-C-O. Here's the column. Go, go go read this column. And I've got I've got links in it. I've got links in the column to, to the best turbine vents. Yeah, I'm looking right at it. Look at this picture. So go read this column and um hit Lamanco is all I can tell you. And just so you know, you can't put enough on. If you do your calculations and it says to put three in, put five in. These things are cheap. What do they cost? I mean, they used to cost 40, 50 bucks. They're not that expensive. And get the good ones. Get Lamanco because you you know you want to get ones with really good bearings in it. All right, um, eighteen hours of rain. Really, yeah, I'll bet it does. We're going to get a lot of rain here on Thursday, I think. Right now, it's raining like heck in Cincinnati, and all that rain's coming coming east. 
So Will and I are going to get rained on. What questions do you have about turbine vents? What other questions? Uh, they're easy to flash. Um, I have a, I can actually show you how to flash them. Um, let me, let me go to this page. I'm trying to bring it up. Everything's frozen for some reason. I don't know what's going on here. Everything. There we go. So I am trying to get, uh, so I'm tr trying to get to this column here. So, uh, how to install plumbing. Hold on. Oh, I got some other news. It's going to be kind of good. So, um, here we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Sometime today. Um, uh, oh my gosh, where is this flipping? Uh, plumbing. Oh, then, uh, duh. I, it would help if I search for the right thing, right? And it's my website. Idiot. Idiot. There it is right there. Jeez. Okay. If you're going to, I'm going to give you this link. And if you watch this link, if you watch this video, it shows you exactly how to install a turbine vent, even though, even though I'm installing a plumbing vent, the exact same process, exact same process. Oh, hi, Steve. How you doing? Um, Oh, okay. So Will's got a great question. So that's a great example of the powers in the question. Just so you know, the powers in the question. So Will, not Will, don't get angry at me. Will says, can you cover the turbine vent in the winter to keep the warm air inside? So the answer to that is you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I think the way to phrase the question might have been, uh, is it a good idea to cover the vent in the winter time? And then this follow-up question would be, uh, is there warm air in the attic? <laughs> All right. So the answer to the first question is no. Do not cover the turbine vent in the wintertime. That's exactly when you need the turbine vent to work because you need to exhaust out all the humid air that has leaked through the house. And if you don't get it out, it's going to form frost on the underside of the roof and create a mold problem. Do not cover the turbine vent in the wintertime. And as far as hot air in your attic, no, there is no hot air in your attic. Get a therm, get a get get a remote thermo. You know, you know, you can buy pretty inexpensively a remote read thermometer. You know, it's the ones that have the little braided cable that goes, you know, out the window or something. So, so go ahead, put 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 one of those things up in your attic. I'm sure now you can get a Wi-Fi one, one that works on Wi-Fi with a sensor. I'm I, here. I'm going to tell you right now. If you put it in the center of the attic, not right down by the insulation, but the center of the attic up in the air, the, the probe, the sensor. And if it is, um, let's just say it's nighttime, all right? Nighttime and it's zero outside. The temperature in your attic at that sensor is gonna be maybe five degrees. So there's no warm air in your attic, all right? <laughs> I know it's what you meant. I know exactly what you meant. People have to learn how to ask the questions the right way. All right, Brett. Do you need to access the attic for any of the installation? You can do it all from the outside. You do not need to access the attic. But remember, you have to have great soffit ventilation because when those things are turning and they're spinning, and they don't make that noise, by the way, they're quiet. Um, if, if, they're, if they're exhausting 500 or 1,000 cubic feet a minute of air, you have to have 500 to 1,000 cubic feet of air coming into the attic, and it must come in down at the soffit. And there must be an open pathway from the soffit up to the turbine bit. I need to be able to put my head, you know, like into the soffit and look and be able to see the light from the hole in the turbine vent. You know, you cannot have insulation stuffed up against the roof down over the exterior wall. All right, what are the questions? There, look how many people are here and who who has checked in? We've only got three or four check-ins. Are you kidding me? Steve, Will, Brett, and Don. What, what about the other nine people? <laughs> who who are you? I, I need oh see, I scared one away. <laughs> uh, Mark.
Marcus, there you go. I need you to check in. I need to know who's here. I need to know, not only that, I need to know what you do. I need to know your area of specialty because you can help in these discussions for goodness sakes. Hi, F, F Sugar. I'm just going to call you Sugar. Um, thank you for checking in. Thank you. There's, there's another one. I'm going to call you 100. Hello from Connecticut. Big fan of yours. Question. I have a finished attic and the vent pipe is visible. Okay. Uh, that, see, that's a great, there's another great example of the powers in the question. Can I cut it? Of course you can. You can cut the pipe. The question is, should I cut the pipe? <laughs> um, you can do it in attic lamp, but uh, the, the better thing to do is just, if I'm, as your roof, can you get up on the roof safely? Can you like lean a ladder up on the roof and climb the ladder and get to the vent pipe? I mean, can you, if, if you can do that, you don't want to go to all that trouble to put a, a clean out up in your attic. You don't need to do that. But the answer is you can cut it up in the attic and you can add a clean out if that's what you want to do. You can do that. Marcus, automotive electronic engineering. Bingo, bingo. Look at that. Electronic engineering. Good for you. Um, too high and I'm afraid of heights. Okay. Here's the, the good news, though. Just so you know, the odds of you having, if, if there's no trees around, if you don't have a lot of trees around, uh, there's there's no way it, it, that pipe's going to get clogged unless it's an old cast iron pipe. If it's an old cast iron pipe, uh, it can, the rust and stuff on the inside can scale off over 60, 70, 80 years and collect at a 90, if there's a 90 in that pipe, I've seen it happen. The first home I I owned had that problem and it completely cut off the airflow. Lots of trees. Okay, what's the pipe made out of? What is the pipe material? Sean, there we go. People are checking in. Now you've got it. That's the thing to do. We need check-ins. Uh, it looks like a galvanized pipe. Hmm, well, um, could be. Could be a galvanized pipe. So, um, but the answer is you can uh, you can uh, put a clean out in if you want to. Just make sure when you put the clean out in, you've got rubber fittings that are going to seal that pipe so you don't get any sewer gas in the attic. So you can do it. And just so you know, the reason I can say that with confidence, I've been a master plumber since 1981. All right. So I know a thing or two about plumbing. Brett, let me see. Uh, thank you, Will, for making me go up back up to it. Oh, okay. Uh, I need to install the soft advance first. Best to place it. To moving. Everything's moving. Uh, yes. Yes, Brett. Exactly. Um, and I'll get to Steve's question. Um, yeah, you want to put the turbine vents on the back of the house where they're not visible from the street. But you want them up as high as possible. So what you do is you have to have somebody on the roof and somebody out at the street. And so the person so the person on the roof is, you know, you kind of put the vent together and you start sliding it up the roof until the person on the street says, no, 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 stop, go back down. So, uh, you know, don't try to estimate where you think you can see it. So you have to have help. Um, Steve, same, pro uh, yes, same process for a bathroom exhaust fan, except I would not, I would not, Here's the problem. You can't put, uh, you cannot pipe a bathroom exhaust fan through the roof in a place that gets a lot of snow. It's best to go out the side, the gable end, you know, just like a dryer vent might be out of a wall. Uh, and you would never want to just aim a bathroom exhaust fan pipe, at, like aim it underneath a turbine vent because some of that moist air is you cannot count on all the moist air getting up and out. You know, and then it's going to cause a huge mold problem inside the attic. So you have to pipe bathroom exhaust directly outside. Um, yeah, uh, you you would use a fern co for that for that connection. Some fern co exactly a rubber no hub co coupling. Um, so sugar, I'm going to call you sugar. Um, I'm the son of a retired uh, electric, electric uh, IBEW. I got it. And a union electrician. Carpentry is not my expertise, but I plan to try this. Okay. Well, what, 
what questions do you have about carpentry? Give me, give me the most burning question you want to know about carpentry and, and I'll help you. You're welcome. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, 100. No problem. Uh, you should take photos of this. You should take before, during, and after, and then put them on the Discord. We've got a place where it says post project photos. You can help somebody else out if you post your photos. Ah, Steve, how you doing? Uh, FES grad for sugar. If you're not sugar. <laughs> um, and she asked me, uh, yes, I'm the guy in the French drink video. Yes, yes, I'm the guy. I'm him. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to call you Sugar, you know, the, the the son of the electrician. Do you have a question for me about what do you want to know about carpentry? What can I tell you? What can I, how can I help? How can I give you the boost that you need? What do you want to know? While you're typing, I'm going to get a drink. Just ice water today. My daughter hooked a... What do you know? What do you know? Also, get this. I'm waiting for Sugar uh, to uh, tell me what he wants to do. About I was going through some... I'm, I'm, I'm in this cleaning mood. I'm dedicating about two hours a day to cleaning up, decluttering, and whatever. I'm, I swear, this is the year. And I'm making progress. I, I made some really good progress in the office today. So I'm going through a box and I find this. This is a uh, calculator that I got. I, I don't, could be 15 years ago. So it's a really handy little calculator. It's got, I'm opening it up. Um, really handy little calculator. But I forgot that it had this solar panel. And, and it had been sitting in a box for 15 years. And, and it worked. So you can see it working there. I mean, it came right on. So I left it in the sun today to try to charge it up. So um, great handy little calculator. Great little calculator. All right. Uh, what questions do you have? So Sugar's not going to ask. Not He may be had to go. Oh, here we go. Cutting the hole will be the toughest hurdle. Um, so I guess we're talking about the, t the hole for the, um, the, the turbine vent, right? Oh, the yard sale. Dude, I am going to have one. Uh, what I typically have done, well, well, I'm waiting for Sugar to tell me if he's talking about a hole for the turbine vent. That's Sugar, all you got to do is type yes or no. Are we talking about cutting a hole for the turbine vent? Yes or no? Just Y or N? Um, I'm probably going to sell a bunch of stuff on Facebook. I've had, I hate to go to Facebook. I set up a new account, actually. I didn't want to activate my old one. And... Um, I've had great, great luck selling stuff on Facebook. I mean, incredible. Because there are all these garage and yard sale groups. Okay, good. All right. So I'm going to probably do that. The problem with a yard sale is I need to have at least two or three helpers. And I don't know where I'd get those. I mean, I hate to say it. You just can't trust people. You you can't trust them. And I had I would have a lot of stuff set out. Or if I do it in the garage, inside the garage. I don't want people milling about in a garage. I don't want somebody distracting me and then stealing something. I, I don't know. I'm just real paranoid about that. Okay. Here's what you have to do. So you, you need a helper. Well, you really don't, you do need a helper. First of all, you need to have like a crayon or a piece of chalk so that when you go up on the roof and you place the vent, and you know about where it's got to be, um, you know, because your helper on the street says, OK, OK, don't go on, like go back down. And you kind of take a circle about where the hole's got to be. Then what happens is um, you. If, if that's where, you know, you're going to put the vent. Um, what, what has to happen is you have to go into the attic. and you can, you can, from the outside, you can measure down from the peak. You can take a tape measure and measure down to the center of where the turbine vent's going to be. And if you're off an inch or two, it's no big deal. If anything, always measure a little farther down the roof, an inch or two. You just don't want to see that thing from the street. So now you've got this measurement. So now you go up into the attic, and this is what you do. You then 
I have to take a hammer with you and a couple of 16 penny nails. And you you already know where you're going to place these things on the roof. Like if you're going to put three of them, you know, you're going to put one in the middle of the roof and then the other two kind of equally spaced kind of down near the end. Then you take the nails and, and or then you measure down from the peak of the roof the measurement and you make a mark on the inside of the raft. And you want to be in between two rafters. You want to be in between two rafters, in between two trusses. I don't care. Just be just measure, be right in the center and then take the nail and drive it all the way through the roof. And it's going to puncture through the shingles. Uh, it's going to lift a shingle up on the roof. It doesn't matter. Uh, so now you know you're in the center of two rafters. All right. This is really important because you don't want to. You can see why this is important. You just don't want to randomly start cutting holes in the roof because uh, you might cut into a truss or a rafter. So now you go out on the roof. You're going to have a reciprocating saw. You know what that is, right? A reciprocating saw is one that's got that blade that comes at the end that looks like a uh, a swordfish. You know, you know, it's, it goes like this. You know, but really fast. All right. And you're going to you'll know what size hole to cut because it's the it's the size of the the actual turbine vent. It'll either be an eight, 10 or 12 inch hole. And then you'll just cut that hole. And there are plenty of videos on YouTube that show you how to take a reciprocating saw and start to cut that hole. You want, you don't have to drill a hole first. Really simple to do. Very simple. All right. So it's a really simple thing. And then you what? and then you just watch my video uh, that I, I put in the link way above, above there that shows you how to flash it. So simple. Brett, regarding our entryway with new floor tile and baseboards, redoing our entryway. Tile first, then add base. Yes, of course. Yes. Tile, take the old baseboards up. Take the old baseboards out. Get it out. Put all the tile in. Tile, tile, you know, tile to within a quarter inch of the wall. And then when you grout, fill that gap with grout. And then put your baseboard down on top of the, on top of the tile. Hello, Dave. Good. You've got a reciprocating. So, okay. So are you, okay. I'm going to call you sugar again. So you completely understand what to do, right? This is not hard. Just real simple steps. You just want to make sure you drive that nail centered between two rafters or two trusses. That way you will not cut into a structural member. Really simple. All right. Uh, other questions. What questions do you have about your home? I don't care what they are. Um, these are all great questions. Every, every one of these questions is fantastic. Fantastic. You probably want to see my t-shirt. Got a brand new t-shirt on today. I have bought, um, oh, well, I bought a thing last week that I put my water thing in. <laughs> Got it? My water, my water thing. The thing that squirts water. Got it from these guys. It's a real nice black shirt. It looks almost like a navy blue in, in what I'm seeing, but it's black. All right. Um, what kind of questions do you have? Tell me Tell me you've got some questions. Got to have some questions. Who do we, we have a lot of people watching that have not checked in yet. <laughs> Bad form. Bad form. Remember the... Uh, <laughs> remember the uh, movie... Probably it got, must be 25 years old from with Dustin Hoffman in it called Hook. You know, the you know, about Cap, you know, Peter Pan, the, the modern Peter Pan. It had it had Dustin Hoffman and Robin Williams in it. Robin Williams played Peter Pan, Dustin Hoffman played Captain Hook. And uh one of the lines in the movie was was Dustin Hoffman saying bad form, <laughs> bad form, Peter. Me meaning that's unacceptable. <laughs> It's unacceptable to be a lurker here. You have to check in. All right. Um, Brett says, if you can't access the attic, well, then what you do is, um, I would probably try to go, I would probably try to look down on the soffit, maybe for a clue where a truss might be. Uh, I would, um, I doubt that you're going to, you know, look, lift up, uh, um, you know, lift up the ridge vent to see that's, that's too, 
That's too risky. Um, you can always cut, you, you can tap on the roof and maybe hear a difference. It's a big maybe. Um, I would, what I would always do is cut. I, I would then, I would then, because I know how to patch the shingles, I would, then I wouldn't take a chance. I would just start to take the shingles off in the general area where I'm going to put the vent. You're going to have to do this anyway to put the flashing in. So I would just start taking shingles off. You know, I've got a video that shows you how to do that. You know, just just go. It's, it's an old, old video. Just go type into YouTube how to replace shingle Tim Carter. And it, I show you exactly how to do it. So I would just take the shingles off. And then you're going to see where the you're going to see where the trusses or rafters are. You're going to see where they're nailed. So that's what I would do. You know, I see the pr trouble with me is everything is to a large degree very simple for me. And whereas you, you're terrified. You're going to think, oh, my God, I'm scared to death of taking a shingle out. What? Well, don't be. Don't be. You know why? Here's why. And I, I say this with all due respect, okay? I really do. If you, if you tested for IQ, the people that, who, are, who are installing most of the shingles today, I don't know that you could get to three digits. All right, so I'm telling you, you can do this. Unless you're terrified of heights, you can't get up there, whatever, I get it. But if you're on a walker roof, if you can get up there, I'm telling you, you, you have no idea how simple it is to repair, like to take a whole shingle out and repair it and put a new one in. Nothing about it is hard. What uh, questions do you have? And if you've not checked in yet, you've got to do it. It's, a, it's like an ask the builder. It's, it's, it's all about being polite. Bingo. I wasn't going to say that. I wasn't going to say that, but I'm glad you did. But the fact that they don't do that doesn't mean that they're not smart. You know, I think I'm pretty smart, but I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> Hola, right? That's about all I know. Yep. Hello, Vanessa. Okay, I ordered uh, today, I ordered about two hours ago, maybe three hours ago, um, my new Mac Mini ordered this amazing flipping monitor. Oh, my God. Wait till you see this monitor I'm going to have. I'm getting you the link right now. <laughs> this, this, this is a crazy monitor, man. This is crazy. <laughs> So the monitor here here's what here Apple tells me I'll get the Mac mini in 2 weeks. <laughs> like are you kidding me? 2 weeks. I could drive to Boston. I could have driven to Boston and gotten it today at 5 o'clock at their Cambridge store. How could it possibly take two weeks to get this little box to my house? Is it coming directly from China? It must. But that can't be because they've got all these problems trying to get these ships into the port. Complete losers. Vanessa, I want to build a 12 by 16 foot workshop. Okay, do it. I've got the plans for you. I got the plans. I've got the exact plans you need. Hold on. I, they're incredible plans. These plans are, they're exactly what you want. I got it. You know, you just, instead of putting in the wood floor like I have, you're just going to put in a concrete slab. Um, I'm pulling them up right now. I'm trying to find a, where are they? Oh, how could they not be there? Got to fix that. How could they not be there? All right. Here's what you need. The Wait till you see these blueprints, man. They, they These plans were drawn by a uh, licensed architect. They are incredible. 
17 pages. I mean, it, it shows where every wall stud has to go. I mean, they're so detailed. This guy did an incredible job. Sadly, he passed away. Uh, I just gave you the link to buy the plans. There they are. Just go look at it. I think you get to download. I think there's two or three pages I give you for free. Um, anyway, it's a great, great, uh, it, it's, you know, so, and, and, and my shit's bigger than what you want to do. So you just downsized it. But the point is, is I show you how to build the walls. I show you how to do the roof. I show you everything and all the sections. You get to see exactly how to do all this. Um, and they're cheap. What are they? 14 bucks, 15 bucks. Are you kidding me? They're cheap. And if, if you buy it, you don't like them, just Email me. I'll give you your money back. you got nothing to lose. All I'm doing is sending you electricity. Um, all right, Steve. Um, in the past, contractor put bathroom vent up to the roof. Turn for, yeah, well, that's bad. So you're going to change that. You need to directly pipe that bathroom vent outside. Steve, where, where do you live? I can't remember. Um, are you where it snows? Just, just give me, just tell me, do you live where it snows? Waiting to see where Steve lives. There must be bad latency today. Really bad latency of uh, that. You know, like you're typing a comment, hitting return, it doesn't show up. It's horrible, horrible. Well, and, and maybe it, maybe it's showing up at your end. Maybe it's my end. Maybe, maybe my thing's latent. So, uh, anyway, we'll see. Bottom line is, Steve, if you, if you live like in Southern California, and you don't get snow, they make special vent caps. Um, Long Beach. Oh, what do you know? <laughs> Long Beach. Boy, my don't go to any of the Honda dealers there. <laughs> Wait till you see my newsletter on Sunday. Oh, my gosh. All right, so they make a Brone, B-R-O-A-N. So Brone, they bought Newtone. Brone and Newtone were competitors. Then Brone bought Newtone. They make a special roof cap. It's it's basically a really good dryer vent, but it's made for roofs and it's four inch. So you'll pipe right to that thing. So you, you because you're in Long Beach, you can put it at the roof, but you would never want to do this if it snowed on it. I hope he doesn't work at the Honda dealer either. Bad people, bad, bad, very bad people, very bad company. In my opinion, I have to say in my opinion, uh, so that I don't get sued for slander. In my opinion, that Honda dealership is very bad. Uh, well, my, here's what my daughter's doing. She's buying because of what happened. I'm going to go over it in great detail on, uh, in my newsletter on Sunday. Um, They, uh, uh, she's going to buy it through Carvana. She's going to get a used car through Carvana. And the price, unfortunately, the prices of used cars is very close to new. And my son had a great experience buying through Carvana. So my daughter is now going to do the same thing because she got, she got um, psychologically raped by these two different Honda dealers, the one in Long Beach and the next closest one. I mean, they they just lied right to her face. I mean, that's how these these people. I actually think that they're shapeshifters. I don't. I'm and I'm serious about this. I'm going to say this many ways. I do not understand how a person can go home or look at their kids and sleep at night that that knowingly knowingly steals money from somebody else. Yeah, I agree with that, Steve Pawn. Couldn't agree more. Okay, so Vanessa, here, before you make a huge mistake, uh, I'm assuming you've got a level backyard. Maybe you've got a driveway apron. I don't care what it is. I want you, 
I want you to get pieces of cardboard or you can use masking tape and you need to actually go out in the lawn, go out on your driveway and you need to place on your driveway, you need to make outlines of all the things that you, you're going to have in your workshop. You know, meaning, are you going to have a drill press? Are you going to have a table saw? Are you going to have a workbench? How big is it going to be? Are you going to have a table uh, that you assemble things on? Uh, you should get my point. In other words, just, you know what you want. All right. Well, using cardboard or, or painter's tape, create all those things out in your driveway and, and create the proper amount of space between them. You know, you you can't be having the things jammed together. Not going to work. Okay. And then will it all fit in a 12 by 16 work, workshop? In other words, you don't want to do the, the thing where you build this workshop and then you find out, oh my God, I can't fit half the things in it. So you have to, you have to actually physically, if, if you cannot... If you can't draw it out and understand the relationships in a drawing, then physically do it with pieces of cardboard that are the exact same cutout as the size of a table saw or a workbench or whatever. All right. Um, I no, she will not check for that. Carvana is supposed to do that. I, I, you know, I don't. How would you ever expect a, a young woman who is doesn't know squat about cars? And I don't even know how I would be able to check for flood damage in a car. I'm sure there's a video on it on, on YouTube, but. She wouldn't even check the oil in a rental car when she was out west in November. She didn't know how to do that. I'm on the phone with her. I don't know how to do this, Dad. And she hung up on me. Brett says, for the concrete slab for shed, any videos? Um, well, I have all kinds of, I don't have a video showing how to do it. Um, there are all kinds of videos on YouTube showing how to pour a slab. I have all kinds of columns on my website, Brett, about how to put the steel in the slab. So you should read those columns. And I have all the columns. I have tons of information in my columns about how to install the concrete. And all the things you need to do right. And all the things you do not want to do. I have all of that. But I don't have a video showing you how to do it. Too hard to make that video. I do have videos showing concrete being placed. I, there was a house. I'm looking right out my window. I'm looking right out my window at this house that was built, um, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. And I recorded videos of, of them pouring the concrete in the garage. So you can see two guys pouring concrete in the garage. But... If you've never done it before, um, it's it's you you have to know what you're doing is all I can tell you, and you have to have a lot of help. It's really hard work, and if you don't know how to finish concrete, you're going to mess it up. So if if you really want to do it yourself, then you've got to start small. You actually have to take a small, just go build a two foot by four foot form, uh, only pour concrete two inches thick in it, get some bags of concrete, invest twenty thirty bucks pour it on a sheet of plastic, and then um, practice working that concrete on that two by four foot area. Practice troweling it. See, see how hard it is. There's plenty of videos that show you how to do it. A lot of good videos to show you. All right. Um, okay, well, I already told you, Vanessa, what you have to do. You have to, you have to draw a plan, a scale plan, if you know how to do that, but some people really mess up when they do that because they don't understand the relationship of how much space you need between things so that you're not bumming up against something, right? So you have to lay it all out or otherwise, because you always, you always lay, this is why people design houses wrong. Have you ever been in a house, you walk into it and you go, what were these guys thinking? This room's too small or this is odd or whatever. It's because they started with, with what you were going to do. They said, well, we're going to make this thing 12 by 16, come hell or high water. And then they try to make everything fit inside. doesn't always work. Most times it doesn't work. So you always have to design from the inside. You come up with your perfect floor plan. And then guess what? How easy is it to put walls around it? Are you kidding me? It's child's play. All right. All right, Mr. T-Bone. I have a home with ceiling heat 
in the bathroom. Okay. Is there any reason that would prevent me from putting a ventilation fan in the shower stall? Yes. Well, no, you can put a wall ventilation fan in. You can put a wall ventilation fan in as high up as you can get it. So that's fine. You just can't go through the ceiling. So yes, you can you can go through the wall. Steve, yes, Car my son had a great experience with Carvana. I mean, and look at their deal. I think about this. You buy the car from them, they bring it to you. I mean, they actually uh, they bring it to you and then they drop it off and if you don't like it right there, you just say I don't like it and they take it away. And they give you your money back right away. Then this is how it used to be. I imagine it still is. If you unload it and you, you get to drive it for seven days, if you don't like it, you call them up. Come back. Come get it. I don't want it. They come get it. You think you could do that with a new car dealer? I mean, some of these guys I think are offering, you know, a guarantee like that because Carvana has pressured them to do it. But anyway, you're going to have a great experience. All right. Uh, yes, Vanessa, about all that stuff. Yes. Steve, where would I actually find a tradesman like yourself that knows multiple construction skills? Um, I have those videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, pretty simple. So go to YouTube and type into the, ser the search bar at YouTube, how to find good contractor Tim Carter. Whenever you want to find any of my videos, just type in what you're looking for, like drywall installation, Tim Carter, um, turbine vent, Tim Carter, um, whatever, whatever it is. That and you're and if I have a video, it's going to come up. I have a four video series that shows you how to find somebody like me. Go watch them all. If you can't find it, come back. Let me know. Go look for them right now. Go look right now. Type in how to find good contractor Tim Carter. You should see four videos. Let me know if you found them. Come back here. In a few minutes. Two, two, uh, one at a time. Yes. Um, I know the net zoning. I used to be on the zoning and planning board for eight years. I know all about it. Zoning. It's all about zoning. Um, I just looked into this for my son. My son put an offer in on a house. He didn't get it, by the way. He was a little bummed out this morning. So they had to have... All the bids were due. I mean, th this is insanity what's happening in the real estate market, even in New Hampshire. We go to look at this thing on Saturday and, and we saw at least three or four different couples. Well, it turns out maybe 15 people went through the house. They got 12 offers, 12 offers. The asking price for this house was 385000 I think. My son went in with a bid of 410000 and he lost. Crazy. There's a there's a giant, giant real estate bubble that's building right now. I'm telling you. My son. My son is going to be 32 years old coming up here soon. Yep, you got to look. And we actually, he was thinking about, we, we were wondering if you could build a detached garage or a workshop on this property where the house was. So last week, before we had gone there, I, I, I uh, went online. You could see all the plot maps for this town. I, I got in touch with the zoning people on Friday. Really nice woman. Really nice woman. And um, what I liked about this woman, I'm actually going to call back and maybe talk to her, try to get in touch with her tomorrow. She was a little sassy. But she would, you know, you're, there's two ways to be sassy. You know, there's this, you know, uh, sassy, sarcastic, mean sassy. But then there's a, like a, I'm trying to think of the right adjective. Not, not sexual, but just kind of um, like a playful sassy. <laughs> and that's how this woman was when I talked to her on Friday. I talked to her about 10 minutes before I went live on Friday. I had the greatest conversation with her. Her name was Kate. And um, anyway, 
so I just want to call her back and tell her how how she was so helpful. And, you know, she told me exactly what could happen. And, and I said, well, how high can it be? She said it can only be 20 feet high. So, you know, which is really important to know. You need to know how high you can make these things. So it's not only how far from the setback lines, what's, what's considered an accessory building, they're not allowed to be as, at least in this zoning code, at least in this town or this city, they're not allowed to be as high as the principal structure. You know, I know all about it. I used to be on the flipping zoning commission. So anyway. Yes, it's high everywhere. It's crazy. Flipping crazy. Brett, house across the street, just under 200 in the market for 410, sold for four. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 476. Here's the trouble. So my wife, you know, said... Um, how do these people get financing for that? You know, how do they get an appraisal for that? So here's a really interesting thing. So I'm a level two appraiser because I used to be a real estate broker. There's three levels of, of, a, of being an appraiser. Um, like you're an appraiser. Uh, everybody's an appraiser. Just so you know that everybody is an appraiser. But you're like level one. You're like, you're level one. <laughs> I'm level two. And the people who do it professionally each day are level three. So you have to first start with, what is the definition of the word appraisal? It's a really simple definition. It's an opinion of value. You got that? It's really, the key word in that definition is opinion. All right, now, so what do appraisers look for? They look for recent sales, we call them comps, comparable sales. And it's a very strict discipline. It's really, I've, I've taken all kinds of appraisal courses. It's much, much harder than you could ever imagine. Now, what's the definition of fair market value? Do you know what the definition is? Now think about that, fair market value. And that's what an appraiser is looking for. You know, when he does his comps. I know you're looking it up right now. I'll tell you what it is. The definition of fair market value is the price that a ready, willing, and able buyer will give and a ready, willing, and able seller will accept. So in Brett's example of 476, if those two people meet that definition, Think about it. And it's really, a, you have to really unpack that. You have to unpack that definition. Ready, willing, and able. Each one of those, each one of those conditions has to be met. Um, in other words, it's not a forced sale. If it if those three conditions are met on both sides of the transaction, the 476 is fair market value. All right. Steve wants to know if I flipped homes. Yeah, I flipped homes before it was called flipping. I My first home I flipped was in 1975. <laughs> 1975. That was 47 years ago. <laughs> I'll tell you right where it is. You can look it up on Google Earth. It's still there. It's beautiful. It's still in beautiful shape. Look it up. Look it up on Google Maps right now. Look at the street view. 2865. 2865, 2865 Minto, M-I-N-T-O Avenue in Cincinnati, Ohio. Go look it up. And then the second one I flipped was just about, well, I don't know, it was about four miles away. Beautiful home. Look it up. Look it up on Google Maps. <clears throat> the people who bought it for me still live in it. Beautiful home. 6270 Robison Road. Okay, so only got one N in it. R-O-B-I-S-O-N, Robison Road, Cincinnati. Only one N. Don't put that second N in it. I know what you're going to do. You're going to try to put in, you're going to try to spell Robinson. Nope, it's Robison, Robison, R-O-B-I-S-O-N. Go look them up. Go look, at, go look at the street view. Beautiful homes. And then I did some other ones too. So I did it. I did, I did quite a few. 
Um, uh, why does the government, because the, because, um, because the government is able to do that because they're overlords. They're, because they're horrible people. They're shapeshifters. That's basically it. They're shapeshifters. All right. Uh, what other questions do you have about your home? Um, a lot of people here, a ton of people have not checked in. Bad, bad form. It really helps me if you check in. It's the polite thing to do. I am not going to stalk you. I'm not coming to your YouTube channel at three in the morning to look through the window shade. I'm not doing it. All right. It really helps me to know who's here and what your skills are. For example, Marcus, I did not know Marcus was an electronics guy. Are you kidding me? That's super helpful to know. Um, I was a real estate broker in Ohio. I was a licensed real estate broker. I'm not doing it. No, I because when I moved to New Hampshire, there was no reciprocity between the two states. So I had to send my license back to the state capital in Ohio. I was not a happy day. I was not happy about doing it. I had put on a lot of work to get my broker's license, but uh, no reciprocity. And there was no way I was going to start over. And besides the whole Ask the Builder gig, in many ways, it, it, it was better than, uh, it, it, I, I, I have this really odd job where I make money while I sleep. And I did not know that when I got into the business. So I, I, I'm, I make money while I, I'm, I'm asleep. Most people don't. But right now, the, if you know anything about real estate, and and you you're a good you're a good salesman or a good broker, if you're not making a half million or a million dollars a year right now, something's wrong. My goodness, it just it's insane. I mean, but situations like my son's big problem. So here, think about this: there were eleven salespeople involved in this transition, going to the open house, doing all this paperwork. All for nothing. And it's the second one this woman's done for my son. It's the second offer of his that's gotten rejected. So a lot of real estate people are spinning the wheels. Now, get this. The, the woman, uh, the, the real estate salesman that's representing my son, she's not commissioned. She works for a company called Redfin. Never heard of them before. Never heard of them. I don't know if it's a big national outfit. She's on salary. She doesn't care whether it sells or not. She just she just gets a salary each week. So she gives away earning a lot of money for the stability of knowing each week what she's going to make. But that's that's a that's a newer model. I had not I had I was not aware of that. But I I don't follow the real estate industry that closely. You if you're watching right now and you've got a question about anything about your home, now's the time to ask it. Got quite a few people here. I, I thank you for stopping by. Um, but you need you need to type in your question in the chatter. I, I don't have, I'm not telepathic. I, I don't I don't know what's wrong at your home. Just type in your question. I will do my best, you know, to handle it. So um oh yeah. Will wants to I still write my column. Yeah, I write my column every week. I just uh yeah, right. It's I put it on the website every Monday or Tuesday, the new column goes up on the website. So yeah, it's appears in about 60 papers still. So uh that's what I that's what started Ask the Builder with my column, and I still do it today. Uh if you have a question about your home, anything, and it, it actually it could be a question about anything. I really don't care what it is. You could ask me about the weather, you could ask me about um you could ask me about Ukraine, you could ask me about Hawaii, you could ask me about the Panama Canal. Um, you could ask me about the pyramids in Egypt. What do I know about the pyramids in Egypt? You could ask. I really don't care. It doesn't matter. Um, so whatever question you have, happy to answer. Oh, look, what's there's my water thing sitting there. I forgot that I put it there. My water thing is sitting right there. What do you know? <laughs> oh, and here's an antenna wire. <laughs> That's an antenna wire I had for I had set up for an, an AM radio. A friend of mine in Cincinnati, back in October, he restores old radios. I'm talking about the old radios from the 1930s, ones in the beautiful wood cabinets. He gave me eight of them. <laughs> he gave me eight different radios, and I brought them all back to New Hampshire. 
I, I don't know what they're worth, but they're worth a lot of money. <laughs> and I, I have one in the office and, and uh, there's just not a lot of AM stations up here. They're all AM. And there's one really strong station nearby me, but I was hoping over the winter uh, at nighttime to be able to tune in a WLW in Cincinnati. It's 50,000 watts. Um, Brett, need to refinish our wood floors. Uh, no, leave that to the pros. <laughs> do not do that yourself. <laughs> do not try to refinish the floors yourself. <laughs> you will make you will ruin them so fast. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> what is a good method for an in-ground pool? Uh, you you are not going to do that yourself. <laughs> You're not putting the pool in yourself. So. You um, so what you do is you you uh, contact the different pool companies, and you're talking. The spray one is called the Gunite, and you um, you get quotations, and then you you ask them really specific questions about how what about cracks and leaks and all that. So uh, you, if for you to even think of, I'm not saying you were thinking that, but you're not you're not going to do that job yourself. <laughs> Best keyed security door lock. Uh, Will, the best keyed security door lock. Um, I'll tell you what. Uh, this one right behind me, uh, it's called. It's the Lockley, L-O-C-K-L-Y, Lockley. Um, I, I have two of them. And I have one here and I have one from the garage into the home, a house. They're all electronic. They're, they're very fancy. They can tie into the internet. They can be, in other words, I could be, in Spain, and if somebody texts me and says, hey, like a workman, and I need to allow a workman into my house from Spain, I can open the door from him. And, and they're very high quality, super high quality. And they do have a key. Like if you still want to use a traditional key, you could do it. So but it, so it's a pretty fancy lock. But um, if you don't want all that technology and you don't want the touchpad, I love the touchpad. Love the, da, da, da. I don't have to use the key. I just use the touchpad to get in. Um, you um, you just want to get the lock that's most expensive. Like if you just want to get um, a traditional old lock with a key, like a Schlage or whatever quick set, you want to get the one that's most expensive because the most expensive lock is going to have the best parts in it. Simple as that. Appalachia, the fishing, fisherman. I'm going to call you fisherman. Keep your sander moving. Number one, that's exactly right. You watch my video. Keep the flipping sand, the belt sander moving. Do not stop it. Oh, and you're talking about the other guy. Yes, you got to keep the sander moving. Yes, it, it is not a DIY job. I don't care what they show on those stupid, stupid shows on that channel that begins with an H. That 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 is most of that stuff on there. Just so you know, is all make believe, all make believe. It's done for entertainment, not substance. For the most part. Yeah, gunite. Gunite pools. Um, just so you know, in-ground swimming pools, um, they they really hurt you. Maybe you don't care because you're going to be dead. I, I hate to say it that way, but uh, they really make it harder to sell your home. In-ground pools, big turnoff. Big turnoff for most people. Like if they see a listing... And it says it's got an in-ground pool. They go, we're not going, not going to go look at that house. So um, uh, just understand that, that you're, you're, you're kind of ham, you're limiting who you're going to sell your house to. Yep. Definitely hire a pro to refinish hardwood floors. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, you have no idea how hard it is to scrape the edges. Oh my God. Oh, and scrape all the corners. Oh, my God. It is so hard. And the edger, the edger sander. Are you kidding me? If you do not know how to use that, you will ruin your floors faster than if you drop a tennis ball from your deck to the ground. <laughs> so hard. Um. All right, what other questions do you have? Quite a few people here. Not a lot. I don't see a lot of thumbs up. I don't see a lot of check-ins. 
There's at least 10 people who've not checked in. Bad form. Everything about that is bad. All right. If you've not joined the Discord, you might want to think about doing it. The Discord's starting to get, it's starting to, they're starting to wake up. It's starting to wake up there. Somebody had a really good question today that I answered. Uh, Lorreen posted some really good photos of her ongoing fireplace uh, remodel job. Uh, so anyway, um, tomorrow morning, man, tomorrow morning, I'm going to make such great progress here in my office because I'm tackling my office first and then I'm moving through that door right there. This door right here, I'm going to declutterize that. And um, that's going to take me a week. But when I declutterize that, I made a decision today, by the way. I, I just decided to pull the trigger. I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna talk to Kathy about it tonight. I'm gonna I'm not gonna tell her I made the decision. I'm gonna see what she says, but I pretty much know what she'll say. I made the decision to go ahead and build that wall 14 feet away that I should have done. I'm not tearing this wall down. Too much work, too crazy. Not doing it. I'm just gonna build another wall, put another door in. The door is gonna be offset, by the way. I centered this door. I'm gonna offset the door. And so I can have a dartboard, put my dartboard up. All right. So um, so I can play darts up here. But I'm going to make a really nice room in there. And it's going to have a recliner in it. Um, I'm going to have model train stuff in there. It's going to be awesome. Going to be, where do you see the photos of that project? It's going to be amazing. All right. Um, Appalachia, best sealer stain for treated deck boards. Ah, so you're going to become a victim. I hate to say this. Um, <laughs> you're going to be a little angry at me, all right? But you'll get over it like a bad cold. That's what I used to tell my girlfriends when I broke up with them. You'll get over it like a bad cold. <laughs> all right, I am going to record a video probably two weeks from now. That's going to show you what the best sealer is, but it's not going to be for free. I'm sorry. I'm done with YouTube. Here, get this. I'm going to, uh, well, actually, actually, I've got a question for you. I've got a question big time. And tell me the truth, Mr. Fisher, Fisherman. What would you, okay, think before you answer, you know how much work it is to clean and seal a deck, right? And you know what a can of that stuff costs now? So you tell me, what do you think it's really worth for you to find out what is the best sealer? I mean, be honest with me. And come on, don't be, don't go on a cheap here. You know, don't, don't go on a cheap and say it's only worth two bucks. Are you serious? So just tell me, what would it be worth to you that I tell you this is the best sealer and here's the proof that it is. Um, Marcus, I'm going to answer you in just a second. I'm waiting for Fisherman to give me an answer. Uh, there must be a delay today. There must be a 30 second delay. It's crazy. Um, so, oh, $30. Whoa. Wow. All right. I was only going to price it at $19.95. And then to my newsletter audience, for the first two days, I'll go three days. The first three days, I was going to give away for $9.95. So you're going to get a deal. You're, so if you're not on my newsletter list, go get on. Get on the newsletter list. I, I'll announce it here, too. I'll announce it in a video. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to record this video. I've been doing a test for two years now. Two years. And let me tell you, my doc... You're, there's no way your deck gets any more sun than my dock does. I'm telling you right now. I mean, it couldn't be any harsher than what my dock gets. You know, and water, and water gets splashed on it from boats, and it's horrible. All right. I'm going to record this video. It's not going to be long. I'm going to show you exactly what I used. I'm, you're going to, and here's what I did. This is why this video is so cool. So two years ago this spring, it was in May. I had to rebuild four of my dock panels. The two years before, a horrible storm came. 
I, I didn't do the right thing. I didn't take the dock panels up. And it was a horrible nor'easter. And, and the lake, lake level was high. And the, the waves were so big, the waves came under the dock and lifted the dock panels up. And four of them just disappeared. Who knows where they went? So what I did is when I rebuilt these panels, um, I had to get long, a little bit longer lengths of wood because uh, they didn't have it. I ended up having, to, I had scraps of wood like this long, about 10 of them, 20 of them. And they're all beautiful five quarter inch cedar. Beautiful stuff, man. Beautiful cedar. And so I pre-stained all of the wood. Once I had them all cut, I pre-stained them on both sides and I pre-stained one of these scrap pieces. I let them all dry out in the sun for a day so they weren't tacky. I immediately took that scrap piece into my garage and it's been in my garage for two years. No rain on it, no sun on it, no nothing. And I'm going to go put those panels back. The, 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 the ice is going to be like here in a week. I'm going to drop the dock down, put the panels out, wash them. And then on the next warm day, well, it's got to be overcast. Got to It can't be sunny. On the next overcast warm day, I'm going to record this video. And in that video, I'm going to show you what I used. And you're going to be able to see how, what it looks like after two years. And I already know it's going to look fantastic. So $30, that's amazing. Look who's here, <laughs> Steve. Um, all right, so let me, Steve, I'm going to answer you in just a second. Uh, I'm going to go to Marcus. Marcus, wow, $30. Um, you just gave me a great idea, Um Fisherman, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to survey my newsletter list. I'm, I'm going to do it this Sunday. I'm going to tell them the exact same story I told you, and I'm going to put a survey. What? Well, actually, I'm going to help them out because I'm going to go. I'll do the research this week. I'll find out what all the deck stains are selling for. All right, and I'll just say you're going to spend you're going to spend $150 on freaking deck stain, and you're going to spend two or three days. What? A blah 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 blah. So what's it worth? And then I'm going to say one one of my I'm going to say one of my live streamers thought it was worth thirty bucks. You tell me what it's worth. All right, so that I'll, that's going to help you price. But I'm going to tell you right now. I already promised it to you. At the very least, you will get that video for nine ninety five. Promise you. All right, Marcus, Tim, I have a bathroom floor to tile upstairs. Okay, the floor is three quarter inch water resistant particle board. Okay. Uh, all right, so um, boy. Um, you cannot lay the tile directly onto the subfloor. You cannot do that. I, I at the very least, I would um, first of all, I would I would take a really good straight edge, like a really good level that's perfectly smooth in the same plane, and I would put it on the wood subfloor and make sure there's no. I would make sure that there's no dips between the joists, which can happen. All right. In other words, and if there are, then I would fill those in with thin set. All right. In other words, you want to try to get the floor all in the same plane. Then I would put down half inch thick cement board on top of that floor. And I would thin set that down too and put it in with screws. And then I would put the tile on top of that. You cannot put the tile right on the wood. It will all crack. It The grout will crack. Some tiles will crack. It's going to be horrible. All right, Steve, is cedar the best wood for outdoors? Um, maybe, maybe. Cedar is a really good wood. It's naturally rot resistant. Redwood, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you, I, mean, I imagine you can get redwood in the UK. I know it doesn't grow there naturally. It grows like a weed on the uh, Northern California. I'm serious. It grows like a flipping weed. Huge trees. Uh, it's expensive now, but redwood Oh, it's a fantastic wood for outside. Oh, my. It's beautiful. Um, it's beautiful. Go, go. Steve, when you get a chance, go to this website, California Redwood Association. California Redwood Association. Take a look at some of the photos you'll see there. Oh, my gosh. Beautiful stuff. The trouble with cedar here in America is that our cedar, like our Western or Western red cedar, it's got a lot of knots in it. Some people like that look. Uh, I, I don't ha like it particularly. I, I mean, not it doesn't all have it. Cedar was really popular. Cedar lapboard siding.
here in the United States about 30, 40 years ago, but it was not installed right. And, and a lot of it would curl. It would get a really bad curl to it, but it's naturally rot resistant. So the best, if I was putting siding up, uh, I would put up fiber cement. I have fiber cement on my own home. And so it looks just like lap siding, really good stuff. Um, oh, you're welcome, Marcus. Uh, oh, you like knots. Okay, well, then you would like uh, Western Red Cedar. It's got a lot of knots in it. Um, so I would think you could get it there, but I, I just would have a feeling it's so expensive. I, I would think any of those wood, any of that wood that is imported into the UK must be just sky high. Oh, my gosh. Um, so anyway, um, you're going to love that video, Fisherman. <laughs> uh and um, it's going to be it's going to be a fun video to do. It's going to be really short. Doesn't doesn't have to be long. The video is going to tell the tale, you know, and and just, you know, the best, like I said, I'm, I have to wait for the right day to record it. I learned a long time ago. The worst time to record out, outdoor videos or take outdoor photos. Well, if you're if you're out west and you want beautiful color, then you want it to be a, a, a cloud free day. But if you want to photograph uh, with no shadows, you have to do it on an overcast day. If you try to videotape people out in the sun on a sunny day, you get they get raccoon eyes, and and that you know. So if we're recording outside, we want to do it on an overcast day. If I'm in the video, fresh air is expensive. Everything is. I sent. Uh, I'll say this real quick, and then Steve, I'm sure will chime in. We're going to switch gears here a little bit. Uh, three or four days ago, I was just kind of, what happened? Oh. I was looking, I was just kind of, here's what happened. Here's my routine. In the morning, I get up and I um, make a big, I make a, I make, I fill this with coffee. All right. I don't know how many ounces, it, probably 20 ounces of coffee. And, um, and to get rid of the drag, you know, I come up here to the cave and I just start skimming the news, uh, you know, different news sites. I look at, I, I, I uh, subscribe to Epoch. I don't know how to pronounce it. Epoch, Epoch Times. And then I look at Newsmax. I don't even bother to look at the other ones. They're just too much propaganda. All right. And so I see this, I see this um, quick story about uh, Prince William, the first, the oldest son of Princess Diana, and I guess Prince Charles. Um, Prince Charles, he must be so pissed off. Oh, my God. He must have thought his mom was going to die a long time ago, you know, <laughs> and that he was going to be king. Oh, my God. He must be so pissed off. I'm surprised he hasn't killed her. All right. So anyway, I see this story about his son. So, you know, the Queen, the queen of England's grandson, Prince William, and his wife, Kate. All right. Kate Middleton, princess or whatever, duchess, duchess, duchess Kate. And, and they're, they were going to go on this tour uh, to the Caribbean and to Central America. And some people were pissed off, man, that they were coming. So, some of the locals in Belize. So I just got to thinking, I thought, I don't know. It's just a random thought. I thought, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder how much the royal family is worth. So I typed that into DuckDuckGo. Oh my God. I come on this one column and it just starts listing some of their assets, multi, multi, multi billionaires. And, and I'm sure, and it didn't list everything, but multi, multi billionaires. All right. So um, I, I emailed it to Steve and say, and I mean, he already knows all this. I mean, you know what I, I, he, I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the clot shot. Oh my God. That's so funny. So anyway, um, uh, I, you ha you have no flipping idea how much the Royal family's worth. All right. And, and here, here, this is why, just so you know, so then take this one step backwards. Don't don't get Steve all riled up, Will. Don't get he already knows it. He knows he's paying. All right. So you've heard me. If you if you're a regular on this live stream, you have heard me mention time and time again because I was reading the book series, The Game of Thrones. All right. And if you don't, if you're not plugged in to, to history, all right. It, the, the book might not make sense to you or the television series. You might just go, oh, yeah, 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 fantasy. No, no, <laughs> not fantasy. No, it's real. It's real. It's been real through history and it's happening right now. Just so you know, 
I think. I cannot prove it. I don't have the facts. The whole Russia, Ukraine thing, that's Game of Thrones stuff, all right? That's Game of Thrones played at the highest level, all right? I don't know what's all going on there. None of us do. We don't have all the facts, all right? So, but, so go back, go back in time. I mean, if we could all get into a time capsule, how cool would it be to go back at the time of Christopher Columbus, uh, the time just after that? I mean, when, when the European nations, when Spain and England and France and Portugal, when they were like, they were in the business, they were like, somebody said, you're not going to believe this, but we think out across this water here, we think there's other land, man. <laughs> we, you know, so, so they had venture capitalists back then. It's all, everything that happening today happened in the past. All right. History repeats itself. So the queen of Spain or the king of Spain and queen of England, blah, 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 blah. All those people, all these, all these Game of Thrones people, the people that sat in the thrones, they put up the money. They gave, they told Christopher Columbus, okay, okay. We'll pay for the flipping boats. We'll pay your crew. Um, we'll give you all the food. Um, but but you 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 find something, it's mine. Whatever you know, you plant the flag, it's mine. All right. That's what happened. All right. So so anyway, but it ha and also it happened. So Steve, when did when did it uh, when did it happen? I mean, think about England. So we're talking about twelve hundred years ago maybe longer back, you know, in, in the dark ages, you know, where, you know, the, 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 the legendary and mythical myth, mythological Kings of England. I mean, they owned the, you have to understand this, the King of England at one time, like owned and correct me if I'm wrong, Steve. Okay. He owned all of freaking UK. All right. Or a lot of it. It was his. And he just let the people live on it. <laughs> All right, so over time, what happened, the, the king, the monarchy of England has lost some of that, but they kept a lot of it. Like, like they owned all of London, all right? But then they eventually started to let people buy some or they gave grants or land grants or whatever. But like right now, the queen of England, she owns some of the most expensive real estate in downtown London. <laughs> Think of what the rent money she gets each day. Oh, my God. Um, no, I've not heard of P and O fairies. No, I don't know what that is. But uh, so anyway, I'm just saying, if you want to get your head wrapped around the whole like British monarchy or why Putin wants Ukraine, or we we don't know. Remember, we don't know all the facts in this whole Russia Ukraine thing. So don't don't try to put your heart on your sleeve and whatever you know. And and if if you're, I'm going to say this. If you live in the United States and you're watching me right now, and, and and if you are a person that goes, oh, it's so bad what Putin is doing to those Ukrainians. Like, oh, I mean, he's invading their country and he's stealing their country. <laughs> well, if you believe that, I mean, if that's how you feel and you're entitled to that opinion, then you need to be the first person in line. First person raising your hand saying, hey, 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 wait a minute. We need to give Hawaii back to the Hawaiian people. What? You're, you're going like, what? I mean, seriously, you do realize the Amer United States, we stole Hawaii from the Hawaiian people. We stole it. 1893. Kicked Queen Lily Ukulani off the freaking throne. We did the same thing with Panama. You re you do realize, I mean, maybe you don't realize this. Do you realize that Panama was not a country? <laughs> it was just part of Colombia. And the people that lived there, they, they were like bastard children. The, the, the people back in Colombia on the other side, they didn't care about them. So they came to the United States and said, look, you help us break away. You help us start our own country. And you know what? You can do whatever you want. And so we said, okay, all right, we'll help. But we, 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 we want to build this canal. They said, fine, build the freaking canal. You can own all the land on either side of the canal. You can own the canal. We don't care. Just get us away from them. So we did it. So we we based, we stole Panama from the Colombian government. So don't you dare start saying 
don't you dare start pointing your freaking finger at Putin saying how bad he is. You be first in line to say, give Hawaii back, give Panama back. You, I bet you didn't know that, did you? There's so much you don't know. And there's so much I don't know. But I at least know those two things. And if you don't believe me about Hawaii, go, go read this book. It's called Nation Within by Tom Cushman, I think. Tom Cushman. Go read the freaking book. It's absolute. You are not going to believe what happened to Hawaii. You are not going to believe it. No wonder. The, I mean, that's why if you go over to Hawaii and you go to like Molokai, you go to some of those, you, you get off to the other islands away from, uh, you know, the, the flashy islands. You better, you better be situationally aware all the time because they hate you. The, the, the true blood, true, true blood Hawaiians, they hate you. They hate us. And rightfully so. Uh, okay, fishing man, thanks so much. You're in a month from now or less, you'll know the best deck sealer. And just so you know, um, well, if you can wait that long, great. If you can't wait that long, let me know. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, let me get up caught up with Steve's questions. Um, uh, is art. Steve, uh, Steve, I don't know what RT is. Is RT banned in the U.S.? I don't know what that is. How many countries did the U.K. steal? Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? Think of all the Dutch. I mean, so many. I mean, so many. I mean, look at my goodness. What was the old saying at, at, at one point, like in the late 1800s, early 1900s? The saying was the sun never set on the British Empire. Look at all the Caribbean islands that... Uh, still part of the Commonwealth, Canada, part of the Commonwealth, Australia, New Zealand. I mean, those are the big ones. I mean, Jamaica. Um, um, I mean, st I mean, I know that Antigua, uh, I was in Antigua five years ago and I still have money from there, paper money I brought back, Queen of England's pictures on it, the money of Antigua. Who, who knows over in Africa how, many, how much they got? India. I mean, are you kidding me? England owned India. It was a colony. Okay. Pino Ferry sacked 800 people over Zoom and hired foreigners for uh, a little 182 an hour. Are you kidding me? Oh, my gosh. Oh, uh, Art Russia. Art is Russia Today. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I've never, I don't even know what Russia Today is. Um, I don't know. Will can maybe look it up while I'm talking. I, I don't know. I, never, I don't know. Kathy would know. Kathy would know. Um, so anyway, so that's the history. Um, I'm not a, I'm not an expert in it, but I know just enough. I know what what I've told you is true, and I know <laughs> that the that the monarchy, the UK monarchy, the British monarchy, is worth billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. I mean, could be fifty, hundred billion dollars, maybe more. That's why these, the whole point is, that's why these people would do anything, kill whatever, to stay in power. Jalen, how you doing? I hope you're not turned off by my history lesson. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, a conservative Russian news outlet. So I, it must still be up here. If, if Will was able to find it, it must still be here. Um, so Jalen, do you have any questions? Um, anything I can help you with before I say goodbye? Um, I can believe they would ban... I mean, Steve, you and I both know um, all of the media outlets and in, uh, in, in many of the uh, people in the EU... Uh, they're all one worlders, right? One world, one world uh, government. Um, so of course. Uh, well, I'm glad you're here, Jalen. Glad, glad you're here. Um, I usually start the live streams about 4 p.m. Eastern, so I've been on for about an hour and a half, a little over an hour and a half. Um, and we talk about a range of things. You basically, you control the conversation because of what you type into the chat. So if you want to talk about something that's non-building related, uh, you know, as long as it's not too much of a hot button topic, we'll probably talk about it. 
Um, so if you've got, um, if you if you have a question about your home that you need answered, happy to answer it. Just have to type it in. So uh, happy happy to answer you. Uh, so anyway, Steve, um, uh, I, I'll look after the live stream. I'll go online and I'll talk to Kathy about it at dinner tonight to see what um, uh, see what she knows about it. She'll know all about it. She's uh, Kathy is so zeroed in. Oh my gosh, she's so zeroed in on all this stuff. Oh my gosh. Um, I mean, we're, I mean, and I mean, I know Steve knows this. I mean, we're at war worldwide. I mean, there's a huge war going on between good and evil. And there's these, there, there's this huge group. They've, they're pretty, they've been working at it for years, man. I mean, a hundred years, the one world government. I mean, that's what the United Nations is all about way back, you know, way back when, right after World War One. Are you kidding me? <laughs> NATO, this is all they hate us. All you need to understand is they hate all of us, all of us small folk. They call us behind our backs, they call us useless eaters. They think they think we're eating up all the food and we're using up all the resources, you know. Like in other words, when we build our houses, we use copper. They don't, they're not happy about that. We're using copper for our wires. They're not happy about it. Free, are you kidding me? Banning free range eggs in Britain? The farmers up, up near wherever, you know, way above London, they must be so pissed off. Are you kidding me? I mean, if, that just shows you how much they hate us. How much they hate you over in England. Oh, my God. Wait till I tell Kathy that. Oh, my gosh. They hate you. They hate. And they, I mean, they show it with open contempt. I mean, it's the same thing here in America. They hate us. I mean, our current leader, they hate us. They don't care that we're spending $4 a gallon for gas. They could stop that in a heartbeat. We should be paying $2 for gas. We have so much oil in our own country. We don't need any of your oil, anybody else's. We don't need it. We don't need your oil. We don't need your natural gas. We have all enough of our own. <laughs> Let's. I, I'm selling tomatoes at the end of the dock this summer. I swear to God. Here they are. Here's my best plant right here. This bad boy is only 22 days old. Look at that. Oh, 22 days. 22 days ago, I planted the seed. Look how well that thing's doing. All right. Um, <laughs> free range tomatoes. Oh my gosh. Oh. Well, excuse me. I haven't seen any of the questions about houses. You must not have any questions about your home. I'm going to give you one last chance and then I'm going to get out of here. Um, oh, Steve, you're going to like my t-shirt. Can you see that? what all those things are. Oh, Rocco got here late. Uh, I'm just about ready to leave, Rocco. They claim it's for bird flu. Oh, my God. That, they're so, they think we're stupid. They not only hate us, they think we're stupid. Yeah, yeah. That's all it's made of, all different guns, right? <laughs> they hate us. They hate us and they think we're stupid. Yeah. Um it got here's where I got it from. So you can go there and get one. They have a bunch of really great ones. I happen to like this one. I just need to lose 15 pounds. A little tight on me. I don't like them. So it's not super tight. I don't feel like a sausage, but if I lost 10, 15 pounds, which I, generally this time of year, I put on a little weight in the winter time. I'm much more active in the spring and summer. So um, yeah. Um, well, Steve, the bad news is we're not going to get that. All right. 
it's um, even if they're even if the person is good that's running, many of them get co-opted when they get there to DC. That's the trouble. And what happens is that the, just the process of getting elected, going through the gauntlet. I mean, most good people are like, I'm not doing that. I'm not getting smeared. It, 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 I mean, because we're at a war. We're at a, we're, we've been at war here in the United States, a civil war for the past 10, maybe 15 years, a winner take all war. We are at war. Anybody who says we're not, they're, 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 they, they probably got three jabs. You know, they probably, they don't get, they don't get it. So we're at war. All right. I'm going to get out of here. Um, had a great time today. I, once again, hour and 40 minutes. That's insane. I just can't believe how long these streams are. Steve, thanks for being here. Will, uh, do you think they would vote? Uh, oh, that's a great question. Um, Steve, that's a great question. That's really, just so you know, that's really been bothering me. It's like been simmering under the surface of me. Here's here's the latest. So, you know, you might not be seeing this in um, the UK. There's something. So just in the last week, the New York, the, I'm just going to say a big newspaper on the East Coast. That's what I'm going to say. A big newspaper on the East Coast admitted that the Hunter Biden uh, laptop is real. And there are people who have multiple copies and they're getting ready to unleash a lot of the stuff that's on it. Some of the stuff that's on this laptop is so, uh, um, so bad and potentially will bring down our current president. Now, what's that have to do with voter fraud? Um, not a lot. See, here's what you, I know you know this. So at least over here in America, or, you know, I don't I, I got to believe you know this. So the whole illness thing, that was planned long before it happened so that they could push through the whole... The only reason what happened in the last election happened was because of the mail-in voting. So the mail-order president thing, that's... if Otherwise, it, it would have been a huge landslide in Trump's favor. Huge. No doubt about it. We have all the evidence of the voter fraud, but the courts here in America, Steve, they will not allow the, the evidence to be shown in court because of this thing called lack of standing. These judges say that he doesn't have standing, which I, I'm not a legal expert. I think it's a bunch of hogwash. But in other words, we have the evidence, but it's not yet been able to be shown in court in a courtroom, court of law. But as crazy as this sound, the Hunter Biden laptop could be the dump, it could be the Jenga block. You know, if you've ever played Jenga and you pull the one block out and then the whole thing tumbles down, it could be it. Some very explosive things could happen here in the United States in the next 30 days. Um, yes, exactly. But uh, here's the answer to your question. If they still, if we don't get rid of the mail-in voting, then there's going to be massive fraud again. And, and, and what it is, it's it's more the machines. See, the machines, all the machines were tampered with. What we need to do um, is we need to get rid of the machines and just go back to, you know, paper, paper ballots that you actually hand count. Because that's simple. I mean, I, you know, it's so simple to count ballots. There's nothing hard about that at all. Because you can easily have enough people with enough observers to make sure it's fair. Nothing about that is hard. And so what if it takes, who says that you have to know the outcome two hours after the election? That's all done by the freaking media. They can bite me. They can bite all of us. So what if it takes two days to count the votes? Okay, it takes two days. So answer your question. We can't have mail if we have mail in voting still, and if the machines are still being used widespread, it's going to be bad. Hello, 8 bit. How you doing? 
you got in just in time, about ready to leave. Um, I'm getting caught up on the comments. One of the reasons I got banned on Twitter was because I retweeted a photo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's censorship. That's bullcrap. There is some really, really bad stuff on these laptops. Kathy watched, uh, heard a podcast about it. One, somebody's got a comment. I mean, it's stuff that will bring the president down. So corrupt. There's so much corruption. Um. Six main, yeah, you got to get rid of your vote mail and voting. It's all bogus. It's, everything about it's bad. Uh, the chances of Trump being reelected are very high. That's just my opinion. All you have to do is, Steve, I mean, you've probably seen, I don't know if you saw this in the UK. I don't know if you saw, oh, you know, before the election, the size of the crowds at his rallies, thousands of people, tens of thousands. What you have to understand is that they only allowed maybe 5,000 into the rally or 10,000 if it's an indoor venue, because that's all that would seat. The fire marshals, that's all they would allow. But there might have been 20 or 30 or 40,000 people outside that could not get in. And Brandon could only get 20 or 30 or 40 people to show up at his. Anybody who ever, I mean, I predicted before, I really, I didn't really think through the power of the mail-in voting and how bad they would manipulate it. But um, I predicted it was going to be, the, the vote would be 70-30. That would have been an, a historic landslide. Yeah, alphabet. Fib, I call him Fib, right here. I got their card, buddy. They were at my house. They came here. Fib. They say differently. I call them Fib. F I B. I don't. I don't want you to see the guy's name and number and stuff. He was a pretty nice guy. Um, Miss T Bone agreed, and enough with the ballot harvest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, Steve, you, you're a smart guy. You are so smart. You understand what's in play. Remember, they first of all, I'm just going to say this for those who are watching. If you don't know anything about the human mind, um, you need to get up to speed. So here's what happens. If, if you've been in the military, Vanessa, if you're still here, any if if you if you are watching me and you have been in the military, I need you to get into the chat right now and, and tell me yes or no that what I'm about to say is true. If you've been in the military in basic training, you you had to have, I've never been, but I've talked to guys who've been in it and women, but they concentrate as much as they can how to show you how to control fear. Because if you are in battle and you are afraid, if you become fearful, it's over. It's game over for you. And it's game over for your buddy. Because when you are afraid, you do not think clearly. You know this to be fact. You know this in your own life. If all of a sudden you become frightened and you have not already been trained what to do in that situation, your brain just freaking freezes. It's over. Game over. So what have they done the last 20, I mean, the last 24 months? They played the scarcity card trying to make you afraid that you're going to die. Bastards. Oh, they're so evil. Playing the scarcity card. And then what they do, just like Steve said, they go from one, as soon as they get all of the juice out of one thing, and they got all the juice they could out of the illness. Because people started to wake up. People started to notice. You, you said all these people are going to die. No one's dying. We're all the dead people. We, the death rate hasn't gone up. You, you lied to us. So once they get all the juice out, they go to something else. Now everybody's afraid of what? What are they pushing really hard right now? They're playing the scarcity card again. Wake the F up. Wake up. 
They're playing the scarcity card. We're going to have a nuclear war. Isn't that what you're saying? What the hell is the matter with you? Wake up. Wake up your friends. Wake up your neighbors. Tell them all about scarcity. They're playing the scarcity card. Now, here's what's going to happen. Once they bring out Ukraine, there's going to be some new flipping illness. It's going to be the monkey virus. It's going to be the hippopotamus virus. It's going to be the hubachi fly from Belize. I don't care what it is. It's just going to all be made up. They constantly play the scarcity card. Wake the F you up. Jesus Christ. Sorry. Sorry to rant. It just gets me really pissed off. I'm so pissed off at people who I still see wearing a face diaper. Like, what the hell? Did you even pay attention when you went to school? Did you even pay attention? Do you even read the label on the stupid box? It says not for medical use. Stupid, stupid people. And they're breeding. They're breeding. I'm getting caught up on the comments. I know you've lost the fear, Steve. I know you got it. You understand what's in play here. You, I'm so happy to have met you. I am so happy. You give me so much hope that because I, I know there's millions of others like you in the UK. I know there's a lot of idiots too. I know. Orange drink. How you doing, buddy? Uh, have you, Steve? Um, I, I don't. Maybe I. The answer is maybe. If I've read the laws of human nature, I don't know that I've ever seen them titled that way. I would appreciate it if you would send them to me. You, you know how to get in touch with me. All right, you know how to do it. It's right on my website. Ask Tim or come on. My how how hard could my email address be? Tim at askthebuilder.com. So send them to me. Send them to me. So, so I want to see them. I want to see what they are. Make sure I understand them. All right. Um, there's something going on. Here's what I think. I'll just say, I'm going to end with this, with Ukraine. Kathy and I agree with this. And she's much more knowledgeable than I am. Here's what I think. All right. So um, just look at all the old Westerns. Look at... Um, Criminals, cr criminal, um, j just criminals in general. What, what, what do they all have? They have a hideout, right? The criminals have a place where they hide out from the police. So if you were part of a huge, I mean, high level criminal syndicate that might include many heads of state, where would your hideout be? All right. I think Ukraine was it. I think I think that I think that there's this I think Ukraine was the hide is the hideout for all of these bad people and they hide things in Ukraine. They hide what they're doing, they hide stuff. And I think I know this sounds crazy. You're going to think I'm nuts. But you know what? History is going to define, we're going to figure out, well, it might not happen in our lifetime. But I think Putin was like, you know what? I'm done with those guys. I'm going to go in and take them out. Here's the thing we all need to understand. You, you, must, re, you must realize everything that you are seeing on the news. I don't care what news station you watch. It's all propaganda. We are not getting the truth of what's going on there, really. We are not getting it all. We're not getting all of it. So how could you possibly make a decision about what's going on unless you have the whole picture? So that's why it doesn't do any good to get into a discussion with anyone, a friend, a relative, a coworker. It doesn't matter about, about what's happening in the Ukraine because we don't have all the freaking data. We can just speculate.
<laughs> they might not breed if they've had the ouchy fouchy. <laughs> Ah, uh, Steve, I don't know. I, I don't know. I um you know you can speculate on that all day. Um I, I mean just this is a rhetoric this is a completely hypothetical question. What if Putin is a good guy to a degree? All right. I mean, I you know, it just we don't have all the facts. I mean, you know, we don't. Was there, I mean, I, I, and I, I'm serious. I want you to really think about this. In other words, think of here in America, um, Steve, we had a, it was made into a really good movie back in the 1970s, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. So um, it was, th those were historical figures here in, in the West. They used to rob trains and uh, they were train robbers. And, um, they had a they had a hideout and their hideout was called the hole in the wall and it was way up in this canyon and um you know way far away and um the police the the sheriffs didn't know where they were i mean it was it, was, it wasn't very populated but the point i'm trying to make is you've hit, you have the same thing in in the uk you've got criminal gangs they've got hideouts they've got hideouts All right so seriously so take that take that up three levels seriously if you Think if you're involved in these horribly corrupt practices, and 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 your Trudeau and and your 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 Marcone and 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 any number of other people, you know, all these world leaders, and just say that a third of them, just say a third of them, are involved in this horrible corruption at a very high level. I mean, it's all possible. This I'm not saying it's happening. I'm saying it's possible. So if you were those guys, where would your hideout be? Where would you decide this is where we need to go to do all our evil stuff? This is where we need to meet. This is where we need to have our headquarters. This is where we need to funnel the money through. I don't know if... It, Think about it. P put your freaking critical skills at work. I can tell you, if I was Macron, the president of France, or if I was Trudy Boy in Canada, and I was part of this, I would say in the group, in our secret meeting, I'd say, listen, I don't want it to happen in my country. No flipping way, man. We've got to be able to find some other country that'll be our hideout and do, and we can do all this crap there. So you go to this country, you find out whatever it is, and you you get that guy involved, and you pay him off. You you make him part of the deal. He gets he gets a billion dollars a year, or whatever, whatever. Is that how you would set it up? How would you set it up? I know you're thinking I got a freaking tin cap on. How could it possibly be so corrupt? It is. It is. It's that bad. Go read Game of Thrones, book one. <laughs> I know the Nazis. I know the Nazis in the Ukraine. We've got, you know, but Steve, we've got, the trouble is we've got bad people in all countries. I mean, it's a very complex situation. I do not have the answers. Kath, I wish Kathy were here. Kathy would be able to have this conversation at the next level. I, I'm, I just speculate. I just know that <clears throat> we have had, that, that bad people working together need to have a hideout. So I just put this out there. It's a rhetorical question. Is it possible Ukraine, the country of Ukraine, is the hideout for all this horrible international stuff that's going on? Because it's got to be somewhere. The headquarters have to be somewhere. <clears throat> Oh, we got that same problem here in the United States. People, these criminals are pulling up. They're getting forklifts. They're putting chains on ATMs. They're dragging them out of the businesses. They're crashing trucks through the through the plate glass windows. These big pickup trucks like I have, powerful, chain the freaking ATM and go off with it. It's um, It's a temporary thing because what they're trying to do here in America, it's a slow process. They're trying to get rid of cash. 
Because as soon as they get rid of cash, which I don't think they can do entirely, then they, the people that hate us, can track everything we do. But see, I, I still, as often as possible, use a lot of cash. Because I don't want them to know everything I do. So the whole ATM thing is going to disappear when they get rid of cash. It's all transitory. <laughs> like our inflation, supposedly. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, I get it. There you go. Yes, bingo. That's, you confirmed what I just said. They, they don't want cash. They don't want you to have cash. They want to track everything you do. They want to track it all. Uh, another two-hour live stream. Wow. Um, yeah, Steve, I agree. It's a here. Look, I don't know if you're religious. I am. I go to church every Sunday. Um, what we're what I believe. Here's what I believe. I believe we are engaged right now in a. It's happened through history. If you believe the Bible, and it's you can also see it happen in history. For example, there have been horrible genocides. Uh, Stalin. Hitler, just bad people, bad people. Why God allows this to happen, I don't know. I don't, it doesn't, beyond me. But we are involved in a huge, classic, historical battle of good versus evil. That's where we're happening. And good always triumphs. Good always triumphs. I mean, if you, if you really believe in the Bible and you believe in the devil, I mean, you know, you have to, if you, if you, you have to really go back deep into the Old Testament to understand how Satan came about. You know, Satan was an angel up in heaven, man. And he was like, this is bullshit. I, you know, he wanted to basically overthrow God. You know, I mean, that's the, you know, if you believe the Bible. And so God, you know, caught wind of it, <laughs> said, you're out of here, man. And, and, and he had a bunch of buddies and off they went. And so they've been at it ever since. Yes, exactly, Steve. Um, Steve, uh, Steve in UK. Kids being held exactly, exactly. Yes, Kathy. If you and Kathy, if I put you two together, I don't think that you would. You, you would fall asleep each other if you're talking. <laughs> she, she would. She would so love to talk to you. Oh my gosh. Um. All right, I'm going to get out of here. I am, uh, my blood pressure's finally started to come down a little bit. I can feel it. Steve, thanks for being here. Um, Will? Uh, yeah, that's there, Steve. So you espouse the whole good versus evil. It's it's so easy. We're it, It's in our human nature to be good, you know, but that said, once again, if you believe the Bible, I actually just typed this today in a YouTube comment. I mean, in the book of Genesis, the first book of the freaking Bible, Cain killed his brother. <laughs> oh, talk about Game of Thrones stuff right at the beginning. I mean, oh. no, no, it's okay. I, I, um, I'm i trying to wake people up. I, I don't know how many people go away from this live stream when we get off the rails like that who think that old goat that old freaking silver top he does he is crazy I, I know people think that all right um but hopefully some other you might be one you might be a person who goes wow I, I never I never really thought about it that way and that's all that's all I'm trying to do if I could just get you it's just like in the morning like when you start to wake up you know you open your eye and you're not awake yet and and that's all I'm trying to do is just get that one eye open. Like, wait a minute. I tried to do that with a really good friend of mine today. It, it's, I have this really good friend of mine and um, it almost makes me want to cry. She, she has completely drank the Kool-Aid about the illness. Now she's sick. And so she, she thinks that she could die, but I, I tried to explain to her, you, you, all of your, she, she watches the mainstream media and 
they, they're just uh, all the fear stuff. <clears throat> and I said, it's just now starting to come out that the, the whole death rate is way been overreported, way overreported. And so the death rate might, might actually be less than the common flu. And here, before two years ago, you were out and about and didn't think anything of it, even though this person has a very low white blood cell count. All right. So a, a compromised immune system. But been a prisoner, prisoner in her own home for two years. She's going crazy. And I, I finally had enough today and I kind of vented a little bit nicely, told her to read the pandemic book. But I don't think she's going to do it. And so it's it's just a shame. It's just a, it's a flipping heartache. It just what they have done to people, the people whose lives they've ruined. It's just they've ruined this woman's life. It's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah, King Herod killed the two-year-olds. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, you know, at, at the time Christ was born going around killing all the freaking babies because he was afraid, you know, because his advisor said, look, the prophecy said that the this guy's going to come that's going to kick your ass, you know, this king of all. And his stupid Herod thought it was a a, a, a king of earth. It, it, no, it's the king of heavens, dumbass. <laughs> so he thought, I'm going to get rid of all of them. I'm going to kill them all. Yes, they will. Good night, Steve. Uh, good night, buddy. Um, I cannot wait, just so you know, if you're still here. I cannot wait to the day I get to meet you in person and give you a hug. Man, that, I cannot wait to meet you. I'm going to pull off that parachute drop. Somehow we're going to do it. Okay, I'm going to go. Thanks for being here. Thanks so much. Uh, if you've not subscribed to my newsletter, please do it. Sunday's newsletter is going to be pretty interesting. Um, I had a little bit of blowback about my inflation thing. So what do you see what I'm going to do? I'm going to piss off a few more people. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. It will be. It's going to be so awesome when we get to meet each other. It's going to be amazing. My daughter, you know, started her new job today. And so... I need to update my passport. It's a, it's expired, and um, I need to be ready because she might say, she might say, "Dad, how would you like to go to London for two days?" Are you serious? On a private jet? Okay, gotta go. Um, thanks for being here. Um, I um, had a great time, Marcus. Good. Thanks for being here, Steve. Will. The Roco, the list is so long. Orange drink, 8-bit vinyl, so many people. Don, there's a ton of people that are here today. And quite a few that didn't check in. All right, so next time, please check in. I appreciate it. I should be here tomorrow. And office might look a little bit better. I'm going to make huge progress in the morning. Spend two hours in here in the office. It's going to be magic. It's going to be magic. I've made really good progress today. And then I'm going to start on the other side of that door. Wait till you, I've already got it planned out. We're going to have a really cool studio. All right, got to go. See you, Will. Thanks so much for being here. Um, good night, Steve. Good night, everyone. I, I'm sorry, I can't remember everybody's name. I just see the few on the screen here. Steve, Steve Met Metaros, um, Orange Drink. Steve in the UK, uh, Marcus, Orange Drink, 8-Bit Vinyl, Don. So many, so many were here today. Thanks. I'll be here tomorrow. I'm Tim Carter. You've been watching Ask the Builder here on YouTube.